2019, I randomly stopped and caught a fish on a nice wooded piece of shorefront. Little did I know, I'd buy this very same property in 2023. I've been dreaming of this moment for years though. Like last summer when Sarah and I camped out at our friend Keith's place on Vinyl Haven, or when my daughter Abby and I kayaked one evening and fantasized about building a little house with a dock on a tiny island we found, or when I did the seven day island survival challenge and knew I needed more time on the lake to build, survive, and adventure. Buy a lake house here so I could just be here all the time. Ugh. I'd probably, if I owned a lake house here, I'd become really lazy. I'd never make another YouTube video again. I'd just, or maybe I'd make a YouTube video every day and everybody would be bored because it would just be me here playing in the water and fishing. It's always been on my mind, even as far back as four years ago when I did the 30 day survival challenge in Texas. I was dreaming of this moment. I have always wanted to live on a river or a place with a river or a stream or a, uh, or a lake. And now with the completion of my catch and cook dock, my dreams have become a reality. Oh wow, that tastes so good. This is my baby! We got lunch. I'm Zachary Fowler and you're watching Fowler's Makery of Mischief. All right, we are back on the tiny house build, sort of. I say sort of because we got distracted. We went and bought a dock on Facebook Marketplace. And after some dickering and realizing the 1234 was just a placeholder, I managed to talk her down to $2,000 for this giant pressure treated dock. So we drove an hour north and found the slippery steps and these things weighed a million pounds. So we decided to float them to somewhere easier down the lake and pull them out there. Aiden rode on the float and the rest of us drove down the way so we could meet him where we could pull the floats out and put them right onto the trailer instead of trying to hike up those slippery wet steps. <laughs> Let's play and more working. After unloading the first round, we headed back for more. There's 10 pieces in total. Each one feels like it weighs 400 pounds and I guess 11 if you include the float. The owner told us originally they had paid like 21,000 or something to have this thing built, but it weighs so much they're getting tired of it and they've moved to aluminum. While we were waiting for the dock to come around, Chris swam over and tried to make some friends with some turtles, but they weren't having it. And the dock was taking so long, we thought about catching a fish for some lunch, but I had already promised the Team 5 guys. It was a bit of a pain in the neck, and I do mean that literally, I had managed to pull something in my neck, but we managed it without any loss of life or limb. Took us two trips over two days and after the final load was on and we added all the poles which were extremely long because their lake and this whole setup originally was for a really deep spot. We took that last load and made the one hour drive back to my lake. And when we got there, now the only problem is getting it down to the water. We didn't want to carry it, so we decided to try to back it down in. Gotta go to the right. right. Yep. Yeah. There we go. Dude, everything's going mint. Hidden stump, go forward. Need a little bit of a saw work. Nothing crazy though. And now while I sit here doing the editing, I can see why my chainsaw blade needed so much sharpening after this day. Perfect. You're in a hole. And we really want to set it up, so we got some work to do there before we could put the roof on in this episode. Hopefully we can get the roof on. We got Aiden with us and our new guy, Kai. And I hurt my neck moving that darn dock, getting it down here. What a pain in the neck that thing was. Heavy as all get out. So I'm gonna let them do the strong guy work. We're gonna bring down these pads. We got some cutting to do and installing. I can barely turn my head as it is. I'm gonna let them muscle them. I even picked up a nice little bug magnet. Oh wait, which one's this one? This is the bug vac, the bug vac. 
I got that at a garage sale for, it was 15 bucks for that and a whole bunch of other stuff. So I'm pretty stoked about that, see if I can get it to work. I got lots to do in this episode. I'm hoping to get the plywood on the side, build out the uh, plywood for the roof a bit more, flash it, and put the metal roofing on. It's kind of a big goal for a very short period of time. I thought metal roofing was easy until I started looking into it and realized that there are so many parts and pieces to doing it 100% right. I just wanted to nail some tin on and then I find that there's underlayments and layments of under and oh my goodness, it's ridiculous. I had to make a plan, do some measurements, and I'll take it to the professionals over at Vikings to order me up the right stuff. So while those materials are on order and we're waiting for all of that, we're gonna stick with the distraction and build the most beautiful catch and cook dock you've ever seen. Oh, power of two. What do we got for power in it? Oh, there we go. Uh-oh, 7%. What are we gonna do? Good thing we got solar panels. See how quickly she charges. We don't need too much power, but we will need it for the grinder to cut off the pipes. Because right now they're set up for a dock that was in like 10, 12 feet of water. And we only need like four or five feet of water. All right, angle grinder, nice. I'll carry the heavy thing here and you guys can carry the really heavy thing. We only need two of those cords for the solar panels. We'll just hook up two solar panels today. Let's hop on here and go ahead guys, see if you can do it. Hey, that actually works. Oh no! Uh, uh, maybe that's not a good idea. There we go. Unload this stuff down here and maybe we'll set the power pack up right here. All right. Oh, 49 watts. Trees are messing us up. Uh, you want to grab the extended battery pack? We'll pop that on there. As you can see, I've already been busy and doing some weeding. And now the dock can get out in here, but I still want to weed a big section here and here, which means more diving in here. The girls are super afraid of leeches. Swamp leeches, everybody. Check for swamp leeches and pull them off. Nobody else got hit? I'm the only one? What's the deal? And I dove around through all of this and cut the weeds down and hauled them out of here and up into the woods. So far, no leeches. There is a bit of milfoil. I've only seen like one or two little pieces of it. Of course, that's what I thought until I saw the footage and now I see that it's kind of everywhere and it had just started to grow up for the season when we had filmed this one clip. There's so much going on down below the water. You never notice it until you really get down in there. This one here, I believe, is European Frogbit, another invasive. I really like to learn what I could do better to help this lake and to improve the water quality. I don't know if it's possible that one person could make a huge difference, but I'd really love to find out. The old boat's a bit of a beater, so she doesn't mind being dragged up and it's easy to push it back off. Even a couple times we've gotten stuck with the tide out in the ocean and it's like, you, you still can wheedle it out there and get free if you're not too beached and stuff, which is nice, but it's a pain in the neck to have to come in, lift the motor up and, and like drag it up, let somebody off, go back out and put the motor back down. The dock will save us from ever having to do that. And what a nice little sanctuary of a place to be able to dive off the end of and swim out to the float. It's gonna be, it's gonna be so nice. There we go, extended battery pack hooked up. Ooh, and she's at 100%. 94 watts and 19 hours. That'll keep us busy enough for today for power. We got all kinds of different pieces of hardware that came with this whole setup. And then we'll be able to draw from our stock of parts and pieces, I think. Oh yeah, nothing I, too bad. I put the super skin on it. Is the king or is your hand too wet? No, it's sticking perfect. Oh, okay. Here we go. There you go. He's good as new. Thank you, you sir. Tried to hit the stuff, not your fingers <laughs> next time. I'll try harder. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Now that we have it down here, we're rearranging all the mounts so it makes three walking pieces that takes you out to a big 16 by 12 platform that the boat can be mounted to and we could build a little catch and cook kitchen on. Carry it. Ready? Got it? Yeah. All right, then we'll pick up our pole and put it through these. Right here. That's it. Hey, oh. There we go. After we got two of the pieces in and the guys went home for the day and I was waiting for the after hours crew, I thought I'd take a little time and tie on this new topwater lure I picked up with this cute little swimming tail and fish that new gap that I just weeded out. Unfortunately the fish didn't find that nearly as appealing as I did when I purchased it and I decided to move on to something under the water, trying one of these Guggen Craws. I love the Guggen baits. The licorice smell to them is just so nice, and the fish always seem to love them, except for today. Whoa, you're doing that on your own? Push it. Now that the float's in and the kids have something to play on, it's time to do some more weeding. Chris and I dove down and cut the weeds off flush at the bottom for about two and a half hours to create the opening we needed for the bigger piece of the dock. It rained the entire time and we got so cold by the time we were done, but when it was finished, it was a clean space. We got one more bolt to put in, so we got to go I'm going under. Been in here so long, we're all turning kind of wrinkly, and uh, I'm getting cold. I don't want to go all the way under. Here we go. Bad time to use this hole for a pee hole. All right. Gotta pay the yeah. hole to get on the back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the troll under the bridge. He's not a troll. He's he's. He's endearing and and quirky. I feel kind of like like a Navy like an art yeah Navy Seal like oh, like I'm sneaking up on somebody I'm like in the water and I'm nothing but my eyes poking out. Do that with a slingshot in the with weeds. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, wrench. I probably look like a drowned rat. <laughs> That is murky down there. You can't see anything. <laughs> All right, we got it. I just got to cut that off, and uh, and then we can stylize it there. Because all kinds of big dreams for this with uh, deck box, with the fishing rods, solar panels, and the jackery in it, and then uh, lights and the fishing lights. And Chris just gave us the coolest idea, where we're gonna put, we're gonna cut a channel out through the weeds, and then maybe in from out there so that the fish can come in have this little space where they kind of hang out. 
you know, put some chairs and the solo stove out here and be able to cook and hang out and just jump off the end. Chop this down and just put a nice round table Ooh, right here. We got we to gotta do a jump, Chris. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah do it. We got to do a jump after all that work. You're not going to do a jump I off the dock? Today's video is brought to you by S2L Recovery. S2L Recovery is a modern nonprofit recovery center, faith based, designed to see people free of drugs and alcohol. Based in the beautiful hills of Tennessee, S2L provides a safe, uplifting environment that only adds to your journey of lasting freedom from addiction. Whether on location or online, S2L provides a ton of resources to help you or a struggling family member back to a life of freedom. Years ago, I struggled with addictions just like many others and only ever experienced freedom, lasting freedom, because of a process just like this. So in preparation for this sponsorship, I reached out to Pastor Adam and we did an online interview. He opened my eyes to the scope of damage that is happening to our country because of addiction. So this is obviously a, a really big topic. Uh, overdose deaths are the number one cause of death for uh, men and women in our country for ages 18 to 50. So. We believe uh, uh, we're a faith-based, Christ-centered organization. Uh, we have doctors on staff, nurses, therapists. We're licensed. We're Joint Commission accredited. So we're not we're not saying that you you know you don't utilize the common grace, the giftings that God's given us with the the therapy and the medication and the nursing. Uh, but we're not going to abandon God's word uh, when He talks about freedom. When He talks about um, you could be you're a new creation in Christ and not tying our identity and I wasn't um, a pothead anymore who who struggled with like just not doing it and was like wanting to do it all the time it was just gone like I didn't mm -hmm. have to go back to it again and I, I noticed that when you guys were talking about it in the uh, what was the name of the movie the the, the true forgotten the forgotten pandemic yes yeah, the forgotten I just keep thinking yeah. of it as the, the true pandemic you know yeah. <laughs> if you, you know it's like uh, you know, we, we miss it, you know, that aspect of it. You know, we think of all, all these other things, but this is a, 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 a huge problem. For the full interview, check out the link in the description below. There's also a link down below for the podcast interview I did with them where I talk about my struggles with addiction more. So if it's for yourself or a loved one, don't wait. Freedom starts today. Click the link in the description below for S2L Recovery or call one 888 215 seven six three zero and get started now now let's get back to the adventure all right it has been a few days since we set it up we had kind of a family vacation spent like four days down here now i want to finish the dock um it was so nice though with the family we were able to take the boat out and tube and drag the kids around and you know, half drown them. They loved it. They they couldn't get enough of it. They beg every time we're down here to oh, drag us around on the tube. And... Oh! <laughs> and, uh, the girls camped out here on the dock and stuff with the tent, and it was it was pretty comfortable for them. They we got a little air mattress in there, and Sarah and I wanted to stay in the yurt, unfortunately, because it was so wet this spring, and that uh, quilting that I put in the walls this winter when I built this thing was just all moldy and disgusting, and the floor just, the whole thing just stank. So I took the torch, burned the whole interior. Don't try this at home. I had to hold my breath and go in there and burn it. Then I made a mixture of car soap and bleach and scrubbed the entire interior, and we brought it back to a fresh start, and we were able to put some new blankets in there and stay in there comfortably. We still got a lot to do for this dock to be exactly like I want it. I got to cut this down and I'm going to put a table over here. Look at that. Isn't that nice? Sarah and I found this log over here that was hollow and we cut it off and she stuffed some, uh, there's like this goes in the bottom of planters 
and put that in there and then filled it with soil and put some beautiful flowers out here and I got some rosemary I can pick and do my cooking out here. The float is epic. Kids love the float. I feel like that was worth buying this whole dock system just for the float. And Sarah's working on a really cool painting for it that's going to be on a canvas with some nod skid because we love to play king of the float and push each other off. The girls, as soon as you get on it, all they want to do is try to shove you off of it. Of course, we know who always ends up being king of the float. It's not too deep right here, but it's deep enough the boat can come in and uh, it doesn't hit the bottom. And the weeds, uh, Sabero did get one um, leech on her from standing around in here. So now her and the others kind of like they get in and they don't touch the bottom. They swim out to there and swim back without touching the bottom. I still, with all the weeding I've done in here, I spent like three days in the water and I even was down there at the bottom, laying on the bottom and cutting the weeds while holding on to a thing of weeds and I didn't get a single leech on me. So I'm not that afraid. And then my other goal is before we spend the overnight is I want to cut a channel out that way for fish and uh, through the weeds. So it'll be a nice clear channel that goes out and that way. And then maybe later on out from our stream over there and maybe one or two further on where there's some rocks and some sticks and maybe even take one of these dead trees and kind of put it out like that is and put it in the water with a bigger stick holding it up and create some feature to the place so that uh, you can go along the shore and creates just the most bassy of habitats. An open clear channel here and there so the bass will move in and be able to hunt the smaller bait fish and have a clear area to move in and around. So let's get to work. All right, maybe just a quick cast or two before we get down to business to see if there's anything close by. Chuck the salamander out there. Something small. Ah, oh, lost him. Right out by the dock. Bombs away! Oh, right at the base of it. That's awesome. Didn't plan that, but that's so perfect where I could just bomb one. Right at the full cast is right there in front of it, six inches from the edge. Let's try one of these guys. Pretty murky in here. And this, uh, Crankbaits with the rattles and stuff. Lipless crankbait like this one. It's from one of my mystery tackle boxes. That should do good. It's silver, but there's been a bunch of golden shiners in here up in the shallows. So this should draw them in. Catch something real quick. Oh. It weighs more. It got it out on the dock. Hey, I got it back. All right, nothing. But I did figure out a good way to get the rest of the weeds out of the lake. Uh, I got a better idea. How about a passive way of fishing while we get our work done? Here we go, we got my little ice fishing hook setter that I made, the Fowler Striker. Maybe this winter we'll have them available on the website, fowlersmakerymischief.com. I think though, without the ice fishing hole, the pole could get pulled in. So, grabbed a couple sticks. Let me see if anything swims in underneath the dock. Skunk. I better get to work. I'm gonna grab that one regular thing. 
right, good to go. New poles are in. Now I can build my table. Fish. <laughs> ah. Hold on, little fella. There you go. Oh, it's a bigger one. Look at the size of that one. <laughs> oh, it's Slingshot break. Got my gold hornet. I got Tim's falcon here, which we're gonna have soon on the website. I'm gonna make another slingshot range down here for the dock, so I have somewhere to shoot when I'm down. All the way down here in the tiny house, slingshot range is all the way up there. I just wanted to have some fun with the uh, plasma cutter. I got a plasma cutter and I hadn't made anything. The first couple ones turned out a little on the uh, kind of funky side, right? I just freehanded it. But then I had Matt laser me some targets, and then I used the wood targets to use as a guide. And this was out of heavier metal because I didn't have the thinner metal for making something this big. But now I got a big spinner. We're gonna put these on the trees, set some targets up. Gotta keep up with my practice here. These young guys that started uh, shooting slingshots after watching me here, just taking me to taking me to school. Maybe something on the bank down there. And a couple in the trees down there. And maybe something up there. Where it's just all woods down that end of the property. I painted them white on one side and red on the other, but I've already found that the red's better. It blends in so it doesn't look like junk's hanging from the tree, but you, I can pick it out better too. There we go. This one's so heavy. This one really got free-handed. <laughs> there wasn't a lot of metal there. It had to go on a two-inch strip. So he's a standing up squirrel. Like, I don't know. He's pretty sketchy looking fella. These ones don't spin, so it doesn't let the ammo hit it and pass by. Like, tink, and then it falls down that way. So I gotta make sure the angle, ping, zip, somewhere over there, just falling straight down. I see a really cool branch up there. It'd be perfect for a squirrel that's running across for this one. Ugh. Yeah, I did it. Now I just gotta screw it in. Rotten. I think I didn't count on that one. There we go. Whew. What we got left? One left. Let's see if we can hang this one on a string and get it way up in the tree. Oh, these things wobble so much. That's a long ways down already. I, you know, I don't have a problem with the heights I used to rock climb, but like, 
a ladder is so different. You're not like climbing a hard piece of tough material. It's not going to fall off the face of the mountain. This ladder just looks like it wants to just throw me. It's rolling to the side already. Oh, it's the wrong bit. <laughs> That's sketchy. I hope that doesn't ever come down. I don't want to do that again. Next time we'll make Aiden do it. <laughs> like, I got you, Aiden, go ahead. No way. Nice. Two. Nice. Now up high. Oh! Three in a row. That is so sick. That one up there is so cool. All right, we got this side. Let's start with our little brown squirrel. I hit it. Four in a row. Not too shabby for the new target range. I'm going to give you a run for your money there, Tim. Bird. Five. Oh, this is where it gets hard. The little bird in the woods. Ah, oh, I missed. Tim Slingshot here, the falcon that he traded me at the East Coast Slingshot Tournament. And 0.4 bands with our little imp pouch that we make, custom, and 3 8 ammo, which is not my usual. There she is. Nice tank. Now we gotta find the squirrel in the tree. Probably like 35 feet up in the tree, just scampering along a limb. And I'm hungry, I've been out surviving for a week now. And he got away. That time. That time. That got him. Right in the head. Yeehaw. All right, that's fun. I'll come back to that later. We've got work to do. Make sure you got all your safety gear on. There we go. We're all ready. I haven't cut anything down with this one yet. We'll see. All right, we got our victim. I mean, our tree. Got our tree. Hey, hon! Are you out on the float? Okay, stay there, we're dropping a tree. Okay, love you. Get your heart going. That's a, that was a big one. So, lesson. The technical, I think, is supposed to be right here. It should have come into my wedge. It should have been like right there, coming into my wedge. But the hinge worked. It's straight across. This part here was hinged. This was a little bit messy. It should have been a perfect angle. And uh, that meant it, it hinged on this piece of wood, kept it going right where I wanted to go, and, and then it fell, snapped off, and fell, and it went right where I wanted it to go between these trees here. Now we got a mill piece. And I was thinking, since we have it on the hill, maybe we can mill it right here on the hill so that it takes the gravity and rolls downhill with the cut. Looks to be a nice piece of wood. I don't see a lot of, a lot of rot. Should make some nice planks.
I should have got those wedges years ago. If I had a wedge for every time I've cut something and tried to cut up and then down and it pinched, I'd have a million wedges. And all I needed is three from the beginning. Oh, we messed somebody's home up here. Gonna have to move out, buddy. Let's see what kind of worm it is. That is a, oh, that is an inch and a half worm, not just an inch worm. There. I hesitated to buy one of these for years, thinking it was kind of a gimmick and it was silly and, and that it would take too much work and I didn't know what saw blade to match up with what bar and all that stuff. And in the end, after a little bit of research, it seems pretty straightforward and I did my first ripping on those boards out there and it turned out pretty darn good. And then I got a new Husky bar that's longer, the 36 inch, and this is a milling blade. I'll put the link or the name of it up there. That's supposed to be better. There we go. All right. Phew. I'll go with a four inch cut without hitting the screws. Except for that one's a little longer, so. Four and a quarter. We'll set this thing up to mill it four and a quarter. You hit the screw once while you're milling and your blade is toast until you sharpen it up and then it's just a stinker. You gotta start all over, so you got to be 100% accurate with that. Four and a half. Better to be safe than sharpening. All right. Check and make sure it's clear the whole way down. Bah, ah, ah, ah. Are we gonna clear? Bah. Yep, we're gonna clear. That was sweet. That was so sweet. Just put it on there and let it right down to the other end. Now we gotta adjust it to be, I don't know, two and a quarter, and then run it again to create our plank for our tabletop. That was a bad idea, I got greedy. All that exhaust from the chainsaw is ruining the experience. Maybe a respirator, and maybe even hooking up the leaf blower to this thing so it's like blowing, you know, blowing uh, across the exhaust and blowing it away from you. Well, we got all we needed and two extra for some material so I can make a back piece, maybe a back piece with a little shelf or something, and I think Sarah wanted to do some wood burning, so. And then I still got all this I could turn into more wood. Too cool. Respirator first though. Safety, safety next time is our new model today, motto. Uh, mostly safety today and a little bit more the next time. That's our new motto. Right, let's go build something. <laughs>
go. Keep it simple. Just 80 grit it for now. Let's, uh, let's build an awning. Satisfying. I screwed up a little bit. I don't know what I. You know they say a uh, an apprentice measures once and cuts twice, and a uh, master carpenter measures twice and cuts once. But only a fool tries to cut it with his pencil. Today I'm playing the fool. I I, I measured once, cut once and cut one strong. Now, she's eight inches shorter, six inches shorter here than I wanted it to be. A little more awning would not would have been nice, but now we're down to seven and a half feet. Oh, that's calling about the, the outboard on the water world. Hello. Yeah, it's not gonna hurt it. It just makes them smokier. All right, I'll be down tomorrow to pick her up. I'm at the lake today. That works. Thank you guys so much. Yeah, All right, bye. Oh, we are in business. I bought a pontoon boat for Waterworld 2. We decided the tote float was too small and we want to travel during Waterworld Season 2. I'm Zachary Fowler and this is the seven day Waterworld Survival Challenge. I think they're baby yellow perch. Holy oh, right, they do. This is so cool, fish just on. out here cooking fish that we caught out here. Got him. Yeah! There you go, dude. Oh. Let's go. That's gotta be the personal best fish, bro. Big crappy! Well, that's huge, dude. That's so much fish. Waterworld season two is coming next week. I'm filming it, and so Tiny House is gonna be on hold after this dock stuff, and I'm gonna get out there on a new lake with Chris. We're gonna build up a crazy thing. We might even have a guest builder on from another YouTube channel that's coming along gonna be awesome so tune in for that that's your sneak peek for now that's all you're gonna get in this episode let's finish this bought some of these things for metal roofing they got a little rubber gasket on it a little self tapping and a little hex head Detailed up. Woo! Just long enough. If that. I'm not even sure if it is long enough. <laughs>
we go. Last screw. There we go. It's kind of minimal. I didn't want it to be too much, but I didn't want it to be too little. And that should be easy enough to unbolt each year. Just undo those, take it off, take it down. The same thing, undo these, take them off, take it back inland each fall and each spring. I think I do still want, I did cut this one tall and I was, I need somewhere for the solar panels. I was thinking of putting them on top of here, but this looks so cool the way it is. I kind of don't want to put a solar panel up there and ruin it. Now, like, I'm not sure what to, what to do about that. I guess I'll figure that out another time. Right now, w these things last so long, the jackeries and the smaller jackery for what we're doing. I, I pretty much stay, bring the smaller one down and just bring it home with me, or I can maybe I'll bring it up and I'll have a charging station for it at the, uh, at the tiny house. Cause they gave me a one, two. I have two big models, two smaller models, I could keep the two smaller models up there as a charging station, just bring them down when we want to use them. And that way they're not on the dock for people to stop by and help themselves to it. Being down here on the water all the time since we bought the property and seeing bats begin for the first time in a long time, loons and hearing their lonely call to each other as they move around and fish, and seeing the microscopic life as I lay there on the side of the dock and look over into the water, and all that's going on, and so, so many spiders. I, maybe I just never paid attention to how many spiders there are in the world until I just started, like, taking some time and, and looking closer at the small things around me that are happening. The flowers and the bugs that are living on the flowers. The snails and their mating dance here. And more spiders. Just so many spiders. And just the insects and their relationship to the plants, and that relationship in turn to those of the fish and all that's going on underneath the water. How beautiful every little thing is and how unique each of these things and operating in, in concert with each other has just in, ignited this childlike interest in me again for learning and, and experiencing all that is going on out there in God's creation. And every time I slow down and take the time to just wait and watch, something magical happens. And I feel the stress stripped away from me as I observe the beauty of the creation and the intelligence of the designer who created such amazing things. My little helper we got all our stuff to stay for the night and uh, we're gonna probably set the dock up and then go for a little pile see if we can catch a fish for dinner if not if we don't catch a fish we got wagyu from Vermont wagyu my mother got me for a Father's Day present I think this year so we got a little bit of that I'll we'll spend the night tonight and then tomorrow night with Sarah and just to have the most fun with this dock as we can and then I got to head out on Waterworld Okay, so there's a certain way they go in. See how one's bigger than the other? Yeah. Still not coming on. Look behind you. Oh. <laughs> Don't eat all the shrimp without me. You're allowed half. I want the other half. <laughs> I want some of their dinner. What are you doing? You got a little snack pack for our trip? Yeah. All right, I better grab my boat. All right, we're set up. We got our rice cooker, the Jackery power pack to do our lights, our new little awnings up, our solar lights are all up. We got Sparrow, and she's packed a little snack for our canoe trip. So we got to go out and have a little adventure, catch something for dinner. Our float is looking awesome. Check this out from the drone. Sarah did a cool painting on it, but right now, we got to get in the water. We're going to go catch some dinner. And if we don't, we always got the Wagyu. Where's the Wagyu? 
Wagyu, what's Wagyu? Wagyu is the best steak ever. Probably tastes gross. When have I ever cooked you something gross? A lot of times. Yeah, only because you're super picky sometimes. When you're not being super picky, how was that woodchuck? We don't talk about him. We don't talk about Chucky, the woodchuck? You loved it though. I have video evidence. All right, everybody dig in, see what you think. The, the woodchuck, what do you think of it? Really? She doesn't like it. It's hard to tell, because she's, what about you? I love it. You think it's good? Mm -hmm. Oh, I know you like the cauliflower rice. Have you had a piece of the, oh, you're just eating everything, huh? Mm-hmm. All right, I'll see you in a week. Hey, that's not equal at all. <laughs> We're gonna race? Three, two, one. Oh, you pushed me backwards, huh? Goldfish. You got some goldfish? Oh, you brought goldfish? I love goldfish. We got goldfish, it's an adventure. Oh yeah? Yeah. Why is it really warm? I don't know. I don't know at all. Gross. <laughs> Did you warm the water? Yes. I had to go the whole time. <laughs> banana. Goldfish? Goldfish and bananas? Is it a thing? I wouldn't say it's a thing, but it's not not a thing, maybe? I feel like pretzels and bananas are a good thing, right? And the thing is, you can't really taste it because banana, banana doesn't really have a good taste. Like, you can't really taste banana because there's no really taste. Sparrow. Come on, slow poke. Slowy doke. Oh, look at how beautiful our little dock is. Hi. What do you think of our little our little dock? We gotta figure out how to get rid of the mosquitoes, huh? Yes. Let's get rid of the mosquitoes. I got some mosquito candles. Yes! Not better? Less mosquitoes? Tired. Oh, good morning. Not a bad night's sleep in the little yurt. I'll let Sparrow keep sleeping down to the dock and make that yummy food we were gonna make last night it was late so we just uh after the paddle so we just uh made a breakfast sandwich for myself and and she had her little lunchable she was gonna have today 
I went and crept around in the night after Sparrow fell asleep. Found all kinds of frogs and stuff. That's beautiful night wildlife, and it was cool. I might have to Sarah come down tonight with me. Maybe we'll uh, do some frog hunting and make frog legs. Ooh, it's bright out here. It's so amazing down here. Something so special about seeing the culmination of all of your dreams coming to reality and and then having the opportunity to share that with other people. You know, when Jared visited and uh, you know, the just the girls and our cousins and Sarah's I say cousins, but like Sarah's cousins, my grandma's coming for a visit. You know, my stepdaughter Sky and having all of her friends over and it just and watching them have fun and screaming and giggling. It's just it's been so wonderful. What a blessing. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Adirondack lime seltzer and get the fire going and get my cook on. You know if anybody has ever brewed a coffee with seltzer. Is there a, or maybe a seltzer cold brew? Can you do that? Seltzerify cold brew? or something, bubble it up, wonder what that's like. Add it up. Won't find out today. Let's make some food, make some coffee. a thing on this 51 minutes maybe we're not having rice with our breakfast <laughs> got all our veggies from the garden Try to add stuff on my plate and how it's gonna cook. I messed up. So I make boom, sizzle, because it cooks really fast. And then garlic, boom. And then pea pods, boom, so they're softened up. These guys actually probably go on first too. Wagyu, Japanese salt and wagyu.
I've got it right here. Rosemary. I don't even have to go far. I'll get a little bit of piece of rosemary for each piece. Right on top. Right on top of this piece of rosemary. Oh, it's gonna be good. Garlic. They went off for a paddle now. What are you doing, Sparrow? You're standing up. Holy cow, she's standing up on the little kayak. So adventurous, so bold, fearless. Almost forgot the peas. That's done. Fireberry powder. Probably shouldn't have done that. Hopefully it's not too spicy for Sparrow. Cut up our steak, see how we did. Cutting it awkwardly so you can see. Uh, I think it's time to sharpen the knife, that's for sure. Still quite juicy, but not as rare as I would have liked. I had a feeling. Just look at this steak though. It's just, it just like pulls apart, like pulled pork. It's so, mmm, that is so good. All right, now the bigger one. So juicy. A little bit pinker, but not quite as rare as I normally would like it, but mmm. Breakfast! Ooh, that looks good. And the steak. Ooh. Top of the pinch more of the salt. Oh, look at that. Put that down there for the other plates ready. There we go. Caught it. <laughs> Sparrow's in the weeds. Why are you in the weeds? Get out of the weeds. It takes longer. How are you liking the electric, huh? Really cool. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. What did you collect? Water lilies, and I don't know what those are. Beautiful little breakfast bouquet. We don't have a, a vase to stick them in, though. You know. I went all the way up here for a flower for you. Oh, you got me one? Yeah, a perfect flower. Oh, that's beautiful. I will love it and cherish it for its entire life. Thank you. For you. For you. Everybody and Lord Jesus, thank you for this delicious meal, the food that you provide for us. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. The rice turned out perfect. I know, right? Mm -hmm. Can I have some hot sauce? Mm hmm. Oh, yeah. Perfect. Well, this turned out amazing. The dock is amazing. Right, hon? We're having all kinds of fun. We're gonna continue to have all kinds of fun with the family and Sarah and I think probably are gonna. We've been spending a lot of time out here. That's why I haven't been doing nearly as much filming because I'm just spending time with the family. Why did you throw my cup with coffee? Oh, why'd you throw out my coffee on me? I don't want coffee. Yeah, but I do. Little brat threw out my coffee because it was in the cup I originally made for her. Anyways, yeah, we love spending time with family out here. <laughs> it's really fun. It's really fun. <laughs> I got so much more I want to do. But for now, that's about it. Thanks for watching, guys. Maybe, Adios. Maybe we'll throw a little frog cooking here at the end. Sarah and I are going to come down tonight and maybe do some frog hunting. Right? Like yeah, <laughs> I like catching them. I've you like catching them? Though. Oh, I'm gonna cook you the most delicious frog meal. Get him. You got him. Get him.
That's good. Oh, yeah, that is good. It's good, right? Mm -hmm. That's not bad. No. Do I eat the toes? <laughs> You're always getting me to eat toes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I knew you liked the toes. <laughs> it's better than chicken. Really? Yeah. And the goldfish, mm. a goldfish is definitely a good fry. Oh yeah. Isn't that good? Yeah. It's funny we're eating these, we can hear them behind us like mm -hmm. burp, burp, burp. I know it was probably like that one's girlfriend or something. That's my <laughs> sister. That's my sister. That's awesome. Sorry, Mr. Frog. We'll see you guys in the next one. Fowlers, minus two, out. Adios, amigo. This is my British accent. Very British, I know. Oh. Like, why do I live? Why am I a city of lily I'm not good at acting like one of those like cool people, like going like. <laughs> I sound like a creep. <laughs>